Hello viewer and welcome to another Toy Box audio video demonstration video. Uh, this particular video will be looking at the freshly released Atomic Pack. Uh, just a, a light overview um, of a few of the modules and um, a little touch on the main flagship oscillator as well, which we're very pleased with. I don't think there's anything out there like it on the market uh, available for people to use at the moment that I'm aware of. I'd love to be told I'm wrong, so please let me know if there are any oscillators like this that do the things that we have configured this oscillator to do, because it is quite original. So it is, I would call it an FM additive synthesizer, an FM additive oscillator, pair of oscillators. Each of these oscillators is a 72 partial additive oscillator, and each of the partials as I'll demonstrate now, doesn't have to be a sine wave. It can be a saw or square or a few, a few other kinds of waves as well. And that can bring instant crazy kinds of richness and complexity to a signal of the like you might not have experienced before. Uh, so if, just for example, look, I'll do, uh, I've got a sine wave. Let's just get the, sorry, we've got the, let's get a saw wave up. And here's a saw wave, as you know. That's an additively generated saw wave. So all the partials are mathematically described, and which means we can do things like spread them around, shrink them, stretch them away from the root signal with the spread knob. We can shift them, shift the whole load up the frequency scale evenly. It sounds kind of like a frequency shift because of the maths that are involved in working out each of the partials' positions. And we can... Uh, do a kind of format shift as well, which pushes the energy of the partials up the partial scale, up the kind of map of partials, and that can be fascinating as well with some uh, with, the, with the right waveforms. Although well, that's and some other features as well in here that can be really beautiful. So what I wanted to show is that we have a sine wave. We have sine wave partials all generating the shape of a saw wave. So I'm going to slowly change the sine wave to a saw wave and you'll hear more harmonics and more richness uh, appear from this sound. Let's go. There's a square wave, let's get away from that. And there's our saw wave. It's like a crazy mad chord, isn't it? That's a very simple introduction to the beauty and complexity of the synth. Imagine FMing that. Let's just FM that against itself and see what, what beautiful stuff happens. Down an octave. Let's do it from down here. Here we go. Mm. So there's a bit of noise at the top there. But that's a nice rich waveform, isn't it? Uh, so this feedback knob has two functions. On the right of the zero, so positive values, it's feeding back the signal into itself as the signal exists. So it's kind of not changing the signal as it as all the partials. Uh, so I should have mentioned this. The partial, rather than the whole signal being FM'd against itself, we are FMing partials against partials. So there's up to 72 FM operations happening at the same time. Probably explains the high CPU load. Um, and what this knob does for each, there's one for each oscillator. This is a kind of feedback knob, obviously it's called feedback. It's feeding itself into itself, but not the whole signal. Each of the partials is FMing against the equivalent partial of itself. So you just get some lovely stuff happening. Um, a positive feedback means that uh, the shape isn't changed. Uh, all the partials' volumes remain the same as they're fed back into uh, the frequency modulated against the partial that uh, it is. If we go into minus, the partials are all uh, kind of calculated as if they're at maximum value. And so you get an instantly much richer sound. And white noise uh, hits a lot sooner, basically than it does over here. So 70 odd over here, 
around 57. That's simply because the partials are all at maximum volume um, when you do feedback from this side. So, uh, yes, that's that. I think we've gone through the spread and shift. Um, but all this kind of stuff, listen to that. Oh, God, instant amazingness. Um, so let's, uh, I think this basically covers it more in the deep dive, but that is just a start up for this oscillator, I think is, uh, mm, should pique your interest a little bit. And we have a nice clean oscillator afterwards, with which includes our um, pre and post distortion routines. So if we uh, put this on, so that's distorting the signal after it's been filtered, and this is distorting it before it gets filtered, which can be a heck of a lot of fun. Mm. Yes, you feel me? Some sub. Mm, beautiful. Uh, so that's that. Where's also the standard? We've got FM on here, and there's a few different shapes as well. And obviously this can be modulated uh, with the, you know, standard block stuff you already familiar with. Interestingly, there's an all-pass filter. Which you can use to change the phase of the sound and, you know, different kind of subtle qualities. Um, that covers that filter, basically. And in the standard... Um, a uh, envelope here. We've just got the low pass gate, which which you'll know the sound of. And uh, we can adjust the resonance and kind of shape. Wow, brutal. Cool. Okay, that's uh, the flagship oscillator and one of our nice clean filters. Let's look at the next one. What have we got? I think we have the standard wavetable synth included in this. Interestingly, we've added the ability to drag your own folders of wave cycles in and they'll just be automatically spread and you can cycle through them at your discretion using these select knobs. And uh, there's 21 loaded. As you can see, there's a load of um, synthesizers, real instruments, some vocals, drums and stuff. It's, there's a great selection in here, all of which obviously are accessed through the position knob. Oh yeah. Uh, we've got the scan stuff here as well, which we use to, um, to save having to modulate the position. There's kind of an inbuilt oscillator uh, and a couple of envelopes. <coughs> so I'll just go through the six operations here. We've got a loop, which is sort of just going forward the whole time. We've got, um, sorry, it's not a loop then, is it? It's just constantly going forward. This is a loop going backwards and forwards. This is an envelope which uh, does its thing and then goes quiet. And the speed knobs describe the speed of these envelopes as well, not just the oscillators uh, used to loop and go backwards and forwards. This loop, this uh, envelope function holds at the end of the, uh, of the uh, described kind of space and um, cycles the last few, uh, loops the last few cycles of the wave table um, to GAD. Bit of movement, as you can hear. This function does the same kind of thing, but instead of going, uh, instead of moving around in the last uh, wave cycle, it's static. And this uh, is random. Turn the speed down, turn the scan speed, uh, scan area up. And you get mad stuff like that. Um, so let's put it back on normal looping and just explore briefly. Let's put it back on a sine wave again. Let's explore this warp mode. Uh, you might have seen this. I think I fairly deeply went into this in one of the previous videos because this feature is uh, really interesting. I like what it does to the sounds. 
I like what it does to sounds. So, basically a sine wave can be bent in various different ways, change the symmetry, add synced versions of that same signal, do a, do a hyper operation, I'm just... I mean, it's pretty brutal, whatever it's doing. Here's a fold operation, you'll have seen this, so the signal is amplified and then wrapped back round again. Kind of get some crazy harmonics in there. And we've got a, a local FM operation as well, which is kind of run. It's kind of itself doing itself, uh, <laughs> FMing itself. But there's also this. So this is a kind of wave table. Uh, this is, sorry, excuse me. It's a kind of um, oscillator operation. Whereas this is the signal actually being fed back into itself. It's kind of different, right? Very different. Um, one of the cool things about this this feature is that you can describe how many cycles you want to be part, how many cycles you want to be part of the waveform ultimately. So we could say two cycles, but the warp function is only going to affect the first cycle of that collection. So if we have five or six cycles, we're still only going to affect the first cycle. So if you can see that being modulated, and which is really cool because you can get sounds like you might never have heard before. Uh, which I think is really cool. That's a really weird feature. So there, that's uh, this cool stuff. Oh, there, lovely jubbly. And let's just touch briefly on the harmonic uh, Chebyshev wave shaper. That's what it is. It's a wave shaper. Um, kind of inverse algorithms either side, and you can adjust the order at which those harmonics are kind of... their relationship to the main frequency itself. So that's that. I think that's a pretty cool little uh, device there. And you can... there's a couple of extra things here. You can change how many frames you're including, uh, how many um, cycles you're including in the kind of... In the main wave cycle. Uh, so there's a few good features here. Nice. Nice clean sub. I did notice that this uh, mixing desk, which is really cool, um, saturation feature. adds harmonics, obviously, to the signal, so we want to make sure that's at zero. Uh, so, yeah. That's the wavetable oscillator. A little, oh, and don't forget, you can drag your own libraries into this and traverse them and mangle them at your pleasure. So, that's cool. Let's have a look at the final little rack I've got set up here, which covers... <laughs> the multi-mode filter, which is a kind of physically modelled thing. And let's just click on here. So here we are. This is the sound of this basic oscillator here. You should see it, little bits of uh, colour have been added to the back for organisational purposes. And we can do the, the same bendy stuff that, was, that we saw in that wavetable oscillator in the previous rack. Now, Let's go through these in this order. So we've got a unison here, which is a cool in, in instant multi voices. I can hear some distortion. Let's turn this guy off. This is quite cool. So we've got a detune function, obviously. But for thickening up the sounds. That's pretty damn thick. And a delay thing, which I think is quite cool, which kind of, sp which spreads the voices over time. 
So they sort of, there's five voices there. We're getting, we're getting triggered in a, in a line um, based on the delay. So at zero, all the noises happen. All the extra unison voices start immediately. And we spread them out. The more kind of, well, interesting pitch modulation stuff you can hit it coming out. And here's a little spread But it's so super loud, I'm meant to turn it down. There we go. So that's a really cool little simple thing. It does what it says on the tin, instant unison. Obviously, all these can be part of an audio stack that you might be feeding voices or, you know, these can be, these don't have to be uh, generating sound. You can use these as effect stacks and feed the audio in from the audio in up here. It doesn't have to be, uh, generate doesn't have to be an oscillator within your rack itself, obviously. So uh, that's the unison. Let's look at this bit crusher thing, which I really like. It's really cool. I've done some prototype things like this in my own little lab. Uh, so we basically got a pitch tracked sample rate reducer, which is what this is. Um, without pitch tracking on, you know, it's just it's just going to reduce the sample rate of the whole signal. As soon as we begin to track it, we can kind of create and tame the instabilities that sample rate kind of sample rate reduction introduces. Hmm. Hmm, you know? And uh, so this, that's, this, this main knob up here, the frequency, is a sample rate reducer. Here's a bit crusher, a bit... So what it does is kind of reducing the uh, steps between, you know, 0 and 1 and 0 and minus 1. I think to basically 2. The more you turn it up, the fewer steps there are, so you kind of are quantizing the signal even more so, which is why it ends up sounding quite square. Um, we also, in this little module, have the distortion routine again. Again, pre or post the filter itself, the uh, in this in this situation, the sample rate reducing filter, and there's local FM, which uses the source signal. Uh, it, when you, if you don't have FM connected, it doesn't do anything. I don't think. So you need it connected to an oscillator for it to do something. Have it connected to another oscillator that isn't the input signal as well for extra fun. Um, and there's a filter there that's uh, used to kind of tame the signal prior to all the stuff going on in the block itself. Uh, in terms of options, there is, of course, oversampling. You can turn that on. Uh, I've got it turned off here because my PC, uh, PC, my computer is a bit rubbish. Um, so mod shape changes the relationship from the, uh, a, I mean, it even says on it, uh, A, B modulations to the main cutoff. So if you're feeding a triangle signal, for example, to the frequency cutoff, by turning this up, it will curve the edges and turn it into more like a kind of sine wave. If you do this, it will kind of pinch it and turn it into more of a kind of squeezed triangle, right? Very handy for just sort of unexpected noises and unexpected nuances and changes in your sound. Okay, cool. That's Bit Crusher. He's cool. Distortion. This is uh, rig we know what this is going to sound like. It's a distortion machine. We uh, have it in uh, some other packs as well. Well, that was a <laughs> that was a brutal noise, wasn't it? I love that sign one. So yeah, that's this. It's distortion. It distorts. Like pretty brutal stuff. This is a shifter. It's four types of shifting, um, and they do all in different ways. We've got an FFT shifter, which is the pitch shifter, a granular pitch shifter, which is a granular pitch shifter, frequency and ring shifting as well. Um, so let's just touch on them briefly. Pitch shifting, FFT, size, 
FFT is a complex piece of maths that uses little blocks to um, run a piece of maths on and then kind of deconstructs and then reconstructs, reconstructs the sound based on what the maths found out about the sound. And uh, it gets used a lot. Yeah, FFT is used to work out what this, what this looks like, what the output, how to calculate what the signal looks like. This is FFT operation behind the EQ. Um, so... It's got its own kind of quality. FFT operations are different yeah, all over the place. Um, and this one has its own features. Uh, so with the size knob again, changes the size of the uh, lump of sound that the engine is analyzing every so many samples. So uh, smaller size, the uh, less likely you are to hear low frequencies, the higher the size of window, the lower um, time granularity you'll achieve. So it's not like with a massive size, things like drum hits won't be as precise. They'll be spread out over time a little bit. Smoothing uh, is the act of overlapping the blocks of sound that once they've been reconstructed are kind of smoothed. So if I, if I turn it off, if I turn it down to zero, you can hear the blocks as they're coming out of the engine, but they're not overlapped. As soon as we begin to apply smoothing, the signal becomes a lot smoother. Oh, such a crazy noise. Uh, and we can pre-drive the signal and distort it before it hits the FFT routine. And obviously, there's a mix button there. Uh, so that's FFT pitch. It, the knobs change functionality, so I'm just going to touch on them. Granular is a similar kind of mode, uh, similar kind of functionality for the top two knobs. The size of the windows, the size of the uh, grains that are being affected and the smoothing is how hard the edges are and overlaps and that kind of thing so smooth at 100 is as smooth as you're going to get for particular window so for particular grain sizes uh, so if i put the here's just a little demonstration of the maths of what's going on so if i put the size up to maximum i don't know what that is in terms of it's on 100 i'm not sure what it means in terms of actual uh, size itself But if I just wiggle the pitch knob around, it's uh, the pitch of each of the grain, grains coming out is the pitch at which my knob, the, 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 the knob was at as the grain was generated. So they're all over the place. But they kind of hang because the windows are quite large. Uh, so that's granular. Here's the cool ones. Here's the cool ones. They're all pretty cool. Uh, this delay, uh, sorry, this frequency shift is a piece of... I mean, we'll, we all know what a frequency shifter sounds like. So, sounds like that. But what this has got is feedback. And a delay. Uh, can you hear that? I think I, that's quite... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. More, more feedback. This kind of stuff tickles me. Does it not tickle you? So, yeah, that's a really, really cool function, I think. But I try not to make these videos me wiggling lots of knobs and going, oh, that's lovely. But I did it again there. So let's move on. Great function. And the last uh, function is a ring mod, which you'll know what it sounds like. I just need to, I do need to clarify with David what the style knob is doing exactly. Because it's definitely doing something. It could just be a different combination of, as we know, ring modulation processes a multiplication of one signal to another. And uh, the style could just be uh, adding something from the signal back, whatever kind, because you're going to get stuff um, kind of subtracted from the signal. But you can calculate what that subtracted stuff is and then add it back in again. So it could be something to do with that. We will clarify that uh, in the manual. So that's the shifter. That's pretty cool. Here's, here's a modulation effect. This is just like... 
choruses and loveliness. Dimension. Like a kind of dimension D kind of operation. Uh, tremolo. We all know what, we all know what that's going to do. Here's a phaser. Width in the phaser modes. Con yeah, controls the width of the phaser notches. So they kind of spread around a little bit. There's a couple of different phaser functions here. This one's a bit meaty. Kind of juicier, right? Juicier? <laughs> Juicy. And there's a three flanger modes, which are quite cool. There's one, here's two. And I think three is the through zero. There we go. Through the zero flanger. Uh, okay, that's the modulation effect, which is obviously pretty cool. Uh, what I wanted to save to the end was this multi-mode filter here. And what this is, if I'm going to, I'm going to switch this oscillator to a one-shot mode. So it's just doing a, just like one cycle of that, um, of this, of whatever shape is selected, and I will turn on this, and this. Oh look, so it's a regular filter, but it has other modes, and some of these modes are akin to what we might find in the world of physical modelling. Notch filters, uh, inverse notch filters, and a comb filter. So, oh no, that's not one. Here we go, here we go. And you can change the distribution of notches uh, and just make lovely doing noises. Uh, probably there's a thumb thumb piano sound in here somewhere. Uh, oh, just I could spend hours on this thing. There's a few other. Shapes as well, um, which all have different, obviously beautiful characteristics. Oh god, it's just beautiful. Um, and in this as well, we have the, again the distortion um, routine pre and post. Obviously, all that's doing inside is distorting the one single cycle that's being fed into it. So when we obviously distort the signal pre the uh, filter. So that's how that works. And we've got this asymmetry function here as well to um, reduce the effect of the distortion on the lower half of the cycle. Um, uh, that kind of covers that. Uh, let's just look very briefly at the two effects I've enabled here. So we've got the delay, which is just a delight. Um, we have a few different kind of feedback models here, which do some crazy kind of I wanted to just have a... Hear the sound degrade. Uh, 
And of course, we can FM the signal as well. But because we're only FMing from that main out, let's do it from the signal itself. There we go. That's it. FM, the signal in the delay line. Why the hell not? And we've got a cool um, reverb unit here as well. The feature of which I will reveal to you shortly, I've not seen in many reverb devices. So let's just, ah, let's turn that down. And look at the options. So we have a few different models of feedback delay network kind of shapes of the space. What fundamentally though this reverb offers is the downstepping of the quality of the feedback delay network itself. So we can set it to a quarter of the sample rate, so whatever, 22, 11, 11 kilohertz, and reduce the bit depth. Oh, let's get rid of some of the saturation. Mm. Extra unexpected harmonics. Isn't that crazy aliasing stuff going on? Put the bit depth down to eight for ultimate nasty and a distortion and a saturation in the feedback. Depth. So this is really interesting. I've never seen a reverb with these kinds of uh, options before to kind of change the actual nature of the reverb itself and the, the quality of the reverb, uh, the, 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 the delay, the feedback network that is the delay itself. So there you go. That is the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoy playing with the Atomic Collection if you haven't already bought it or at least demoed it. Um, so thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. Make some music, make crazy noises and enjoy. Enjoy.